Okay, we've uh, worked on uh, several uh, techniques and exercises during the session. I stepped out to grab some treats and we're going to recreate the greeting and see how Sophie's guardian is able to implement the new techniques that I introduced uh, and apply them to uh, the greeting. Here we go. Now I'll describe what he's, what's going on in here. I gave him some escalating consequences to use. Um, and what I'm having him do is insert himself between the door and the dogs with the door back to his door, his door, his back to the door, and then to walk directly at whoever the most excited dog is first and get that dog off of the tile that it surrounds the doorway. Um, then he's going to move backwards while continuing to keep the door at his back and march towards the next dog and then pause and wait for that dog to be stationary, then take a step backwards, pause, wait for the dogs to be stationary, and then take another step backwards and keep repeating the process. If at any point the dogs come forward, he's going to rush at them until they get off of the tile. Once he's gotten all the dogs off, now he's saying stay, which he shouldn't do. He just, should just use body language only and body movement more specifically. Then eventually he gets to the door. I wanted him to jiggle the deadbolt of the door first and give the dog the ability. Now he's, you're a little bit past, oh, there we go. Um, and uh, what we want to do, that's a trigger. So we break down this and help the dog practice hearing that sound, but not rushing the door. Uh, then we, uh, when we've accomplished that, then we go back and we jiggle the doorknob and stop. At any point the dog comes forward, we stop what we're doing and rush the door, rush the dog. So what we're trying to do is establish a boundary around the door. The dogs are not allowed to cross the boundary and we're going to control the situation before we let the guest in. This way the dog is in a much calmer state of mind and is able to control itself much better. Now don't worry about the barking. We don't worry about barking when we first start practicing this because the barking will subside as the dogs kind of give this up. Having, uh, taking control of the greeting, or the greeting is typically handled by the senior most dog, the dog with the most authority. So if we take over this job, this helps the dogs see us as the authority figures. Now, again, the barking isn't something that's ideal, but we're not going to respond to it. Now take one small step, take a small step backwards and pause. And don't pause in between your step. So a very bold step. And you see Kalua respecting the button. Now, now rush, 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 rush. So as soon as they're on the tile or in your new house, as soon as they come off the first step, you rush at them full speed until they get back on base. And this base is the carpet there or there. In your new house, it's going to be the split, the split level, the top uh, or uh, the top step of the split level. Now, uh, go ahead and take a step backwards, one square. Take another step backwards. And so we've accomplished communicating to the dogs that they need to stay, oh, rush, there, stop. As soon as they get off, off of the tile or in the new place, just boom, rush, there you go. Now I know that, that Sophie is the dog that you're most concerned about. Now you can use a harsh hiss the next time you, you have to step forward at the same time. Take a step back. That was good. So I take, like to take a left left foot, right foot, and then stop and pause. Don't pause and don't like take a half, take one step and then pause. Make sure you're taking deliberate steps. Deliberate movements are more confident to a dog, and dogs are gonna respond better to confidence. There you go. That was a pro. Now take a step to your left. Now if the dog is still challenging, you can take a step at Sophie. Take a step right at her. Now that was a very, a very timid step. Take a step backwards. I want you to take a big, deliberate, sudden step. There you go. See how she moved back? Your first step, you just kind of very slowly shifted forward. You want to communicate that you disagree by a sudden, deliberate movement that has some gravitas to it. There we go. That was a much better one. And you can see you got a better response. Now, now if the dog SITs or LAYs, then you can take multiple steps backwards. But this is a much better greeting than what we accomplished, what we dealt with the first time. And it's going to get better as you practice. There you go. Now that could have been a hiss for, should have been a hiss first. That's all right, we're throwing this at you, but this is why I'm recording it so that you have this information to go on later on because I'm not gonna be at your new place. But yeah, so now that was multiple steps backwards. So take one step, left, right, stop, read the dog. Take another step, left, right, stop. As you're going down your stairs, I would, once the dogs are on the top step, 
I would turn around and walk down the stairs backwards, take one step and stop. I probably actually I was thinking about I probably am at the bottom of the stairs because we'll be going it, either one. But I'm you assuming just it's before, it's before, kind of what I'm asking. Well, it, probably best not to go through. I'm going to stop you right oh. just because I want to keep this really uh, as short as possible. Well, I answer that question off camera. Um, but basically, either top or bottom, but just they're not allowed to be on the steps at all. Stop. That was a great response. Kalu went way across the room. All right. This is a much better way of controlling the greeting. Right, Soph? 